whenever I see a fellow endgame free to play or mimic CCs and say that they're skipping a fusion. I kind of skimmed over this, trying to gain a sense of what exactly he's talking about. This is obvious, obviously the the um the faction guardians thing. And so these are all past fusions. I've said this before that I feel like it's more so heavily weighted that our fusion champions are more so heavily weighted that you're more than likely to summon a fusion champion over anybody else in the summoning pool. Somebody else commented that it might be because it might be because the champions that are in the pool are mostly past fusions. I don't know what the numbers are, but I guess that kind of makes sense, right? If most of the champions are fusion champions, then it makes sense that you're going to end up pulling more fusion champions. But anyway, yeah, um, I feel like a lot of CCs encourage players, watchers to go for fusion champions. I haven't done a fusion since Armand's and I've been totally fine with it. I'm still good. I am totally behind, you know, saying to skip a fusion. A lot of people might say, oh, you know, get a, a fusion because it's free. It's a guaranteed champion. Get a champion wherever, where, get a Lego wherever you can get a Lego. A Lego is a Lego. It's still yellow. True. But it's not entirely free because you spend the time and the effort and you don't give yourself that room to stack resources for something that you really want, right? And that's an entirely different conversation. But, you know, there's people like me who is going to be, who will be 100% like real with you. And I'll, I'll tell you guys, look, if you're, if you're XYZ type of player, then yes, go for this. But if you're like me or you're an end gamer or you can do this, this, and this, and this, skip the fusion. And that's part of why I say skip fusions a lot, you know, to save yourself the, the mental strain or whatever. But yeah. Um, so anybody who says mimicking CCs, I think that they're coming from the standpoint that they're around people who say that they're going to skip a fusion just because a CC is saying that they're going to skip a fusion. And I want you guys to know something, right? Just because I'm up here doing YouTube and talking to you guys doesn't mean I know everything. I don't know a lot of things. A lot of things go over my head. There's a lot I don't know. There's a lot of things that you guys know more so than I do. There's a lot that you guys know that I don't. So don't take my word as, you know, the end all be all, the alpha omega. Take what I say with a grain of salt. Think for yourself, okay? I say a lot of things that are wrong all the time on top of that. You know what I mean? But if I'm wrong, I always admit that I'm wrong and I'm always open to hearing a discussion from you guys. So, you know, with that out of the way, let's dive into what they're saying here. Skipping fusions for me is not always about how good they are or might not be but whether i feel it's worth the real life time and energy needed to get them exactly having to basically play the game every day for long periods which is usually a period of about two weeks i think isn't always possible especially with a family and a full-time job so i pick and choose which ones i want to go for nothing to do with mimicking cc's 100 percent. i i like this right and not everybody mimics cc's i i, I think maybe i overspoke there or i didn't speak correctly i think a lot of people and there's nothing wrong with this because I do this too. A lot of people like to have these, I guess, conversations with CCs or they like, or they like to get the CCs' um, opinions. Most of the time, not because they're going to follow what the CC says, but I think it's just kind of like a reference point, right? Because I ask you guys a lot of questions in my community posts like, oh, what do you think about this? Or in my videos or in my streams. Uh, I don't stream much anymore, but I used to. Um, but like I ask you guys a lot of questions too, right? It's not because I don't know the answer. A lot of the times I ask you guys questions, I already know the answers, but I don't know what I don't know. So it's always good to converse and communicate with other people because there might be something that you don't know. And it's always good to to stop and compare to see what other people are doing and reference that, use that as a reference point for yourself. This goes within life. This goes in um, raid as well. You know, it's it's never a bad idea to see other people's opinions and see their perspectives, right? That's how we grow as humans, right? As players. I usually only go for those that have something unique about them that I feel I might regret later on if I didn't get them. The current one, for an example, is an easy skip because I have plenty of basically just a damage dealer. But I went for Pack Lord because the unique hound link up. We still have yet to hear about the hound. It would have been cool if it was Fenrir during the Asgard Divide event, I don't think it's going to be that. Someone in my comments mentioned 
could be a Thanksgiving fusion or a Halloween fusion. That's cool. I would just like to hear an update from Polarium. I just want to know, where's the dog at? And if it's worth for me to even go for them on the chance I pull a dupe. A dupe. The other thing about the dog is we don't know if it's going to be a good link up, right? We just don't know. It could be good. It could be crap. Pull a dupe that I wouldn't even be that I that wouldn't even be factored into my thinking whether when I decide or not. As the chances are, I won't pull a dupe. I don't pull enough Legos, so I don't have many dupes. Hardest part for me is finding artifacts worth upgrading, taxing on my mental mental health, dude. Fucking artifacts, bro. Doing gear cleanses. How long do you guys spend doing gear cleanses? It takes me a long time to do gear cleanses. It's crazy, dude. It's, it's fucking insane, bro. I'm on a point in which even if it's an amazing champion, I, I sometimes just skip it. In real life stuff doesn't always align with summon events. I have to travel for work. I need to cover some night shifts in what I do. A fucking fusion from a money hungry company is not worth my time. Especially if I, especially, especially if I consider the fact that I barely have any time to spare. That's true, right? We all have, I mean, I think a lot of us have lives outside of the game i do i have a wife i got kids i have a you know full-time job i try to do content on three different youtube channels uh, as best as i can i want to pump out content you know the goal for me is to become a, a full-time youtuber because you know i, I want to get paid to play video games basically but it's true right a lot of people work salary jobs have six-figure incomes who bring home the bread right Shout out to you guys who do who do work, you know, the 80 hour work weeks or, you know, a full 40 hours plus, you know what I mean? Um, it's a lot. And then to pump time into a game, Raid is basically a full time job on top of that, right? So, you know, that, it's just, it just makes sense to to skip fusions. And again, you know, referencing back to the main point here, I don't think people are just following what the CCs do. I think it's just good good to get some insight. Can someone explain what the original poster is saying to me in a way that isn't only understandable by people with brain rot? That's fucking funny. <laughs> the original poster is saying that getting any legendary you can is worth it because it creates faction guardian potential. Every faction guardian they listed was a free champ of some kind they pulled a dupe for. Yes and no. Again, if we're taking the entire context of what a lot of people are saying, yes and no, right? It can be worth it for the simple fact that if you go to your faction guardians, um, you can get bonuses. And if you care, if you're like really into the game and you care about it, like you're going to want to get extra 10 speed. Right, you're gonna want to stack this up, but if you play for a long time, I fucking guarantee you, bro, you're gonna end up with dupes on dupes on dupes. It's just the way the game is, right? You're gonna end up with dupes. It, it, it's the way it is, right? It's gonna happen. So I wouldn't stress too much about it because I guarantee you it's gonna happen. If you just play long enough, even if you play passively, you're gonna end up with, I don't know, four Pixneels. RIP to you if you're that person, but still. And again, in this game, you're just gonna want to pick and choose right you pick and choose the things that you want to go for the things that you care about ultimately it's up to you what you care about might be different than what i care about or what somebody else cares about the things that i do aren't going to be the things that a lot of other people do for an example me the way that i'm doing my gear now is um i roll it i'm gonna roll that one up um you know ignore all this gear that hasn't been rolled up yet but like all these gears all these pieces of gear i only keep triples if it doesn't triple I don't really care. I don't keep it, right? Triple, triple, triple. This one, look, I didn't even see this one. There's no triple here. I'm going to sell it. This has a potential for triple. Triple. Let me put more 16s here. Triple. Roll that up. A triple. And this basically forces me... This doesn't have a triple. I'm going to sell that. This basically forces me to farm for better gear, right? That way I'm not spending so much time trying to sift through gear that ultimately won't in the long run work out for me 
not not okay the, and again this is completely an out out there idea i'm not saying to do this i'm definitely recommending you don't do this but i'm saying this is how i do it i only keep triples and above i only keep triples i just said i just said that i was about to say it again i'm not going to say it again but basically like the point is just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to do it. Even if a lot of people are saying to do it, doesn't mean you have to do it. If a lot of people were telling me, hey, go for this fusion, and I say that I don't want to go for the fusion, I don't give a shit. I'm not going for the fusion. I might entertain the ideas that people might want to share. That's cool. But ultimately, you are the one that decides how you're going to run your account. You're the one that decides how you're going to run your life. Right? Right? And for some of you guys saying, oh, Burrito, you only keep triple gear. That's not good for you. Like, oh, that's bad. You know, uh, that's real stupid or whatever. You know what? Is it stupid really if it's working? Because it's been working for me for a long time, right? So I don't think it's stupid. Uh, on three different accounts, that's how I do it. I'm doing very well. Agreed. Almost all my dupe Legos are fusion champions. Free to play, all the extra perks you get are worth taking. That's true. If you can take it, you got nothing else to do, and you just passively can do it, and it's an easy fusion. Sure, why not? Take it. I'm not saying don't do fusions. I'm just saying, you know, think a little. And, uh, you know, if it works out for you, cool. And just basically don't, don't do it just because someone's telling you to or not do it. And if you use your resources scarcely in between, doing fusions will normally not stop you from participating in a worthy guaranteed event, right? Because you could just throw your phone on auto and dungeon divers for, like, dragon or something. There's nothing wrong with that. One more thought before I, I leave it, like, um, because there's still, <laughs> they still haven't increased the the gears the gear um, limit. Like the way I, I do my gear helps me keep my gear under the fifteen hundred mark. Just saying. I have so many level fifty Legos in the vault, but that's exactly it. Faction guardians replacing good champs so I can plus one them. Yeah, the way I do it is, I'm gonna fill out my faction guardians first, and then I'm gonna pu start plus oneing my champions. I've been talking so much that I don't know. I haven't been drinking my beer. Yes, I know they're not all fusions, but they're champs I've gotten from either logging in or as a milestone. Most people say they're skipping a fusion after the CCs call said fusions average. If you're a whale, I completely understand. You have more champs than you'll ever need. Anyone else going? For yeah, that's basically it. That's, that's, yeah, he said it. Anyone else should do them for the likelihood of pulling a dupe and eventually filling in their faction guardians. True. When you reach endgame, fusions are not hard to do. They're not. A few shards is all you need, basically. If you're uh, skipping fusions as an endgame player and you're not Ash or Plat 4, uh, Plat plus 4 owning player, you're doing yourself a, dis a service. Yeah, if you're skipping fusions as an endgame player and you're not Ash or Plat 4, you're dis... So... We'll, we'll hit on this for a a little bit. I think the point is more if the fusion is Armand's powerful, everybody should try to get it. If the fusion is mid, you have to ask yourself, is he a benefit for your account if he's worth the time and resources? Definitely worth the resources. I guess that's his whole point, but the time argument is an important thing. Fusions are intensive. Yes. If you're in game and the fusion is trash or irrelevant, there's no point in dumping eight sacreds or... Yeah, exactly what I was about to say. Because he was just like, if you're skipping fusions and you're end game. You're doing yourself a disservice unless you're Ash in a, or a Plat 4 plus whatever thing. I don't ent entirely agree with this, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit hammer more on this, but this, what he's about to say, is something that I was going to say. If you're an endgame player and the fusion is trash or irrelevant to you and your account, there's no reason to dump eight sacred shards or an equivalent for it if you could pull for guarantees like Narcis or try to hit a Teox-type game-changing ch uh, game champ on limited pull windows or progressive. Uh, you're not doing the fusion easily. You're wasting resources on trash, hoping you pull a dupe of useless garbage later. Congrats, you set yourself back from any real progress while claiming you are endgame, all for some Vault Guardian. A couple things to unpack here, a couple of thoughts I want to get through, right? You guys know, me. If, you, if you've been around my channel, you've been around the Burrito Slayer himself for a minute, you guys already know, I don't like comments that put blanket statements on people. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it's right. You know what I mean? For an example, telling somebody they're going to regret skipping a fusion or everybody's going to regret skipping this fusion so everybody should go for it, that's not cool. You you shouldn't be placing your opinions and forcing them 
upon everybody. It's cool if you have your own opinion. It's I'm not saying don't have an opinion. I'm just saying don't force those opinions on everybody. And don't definitely assume you're going to know how somebody feels. Saying a statement like, if you're, like, I understand where he's coming from, but I don't entirely agree with the way that he's going about it, right? I get where he's coming from. But for him to put a blanket statement on, on everybody just probably isn't like the best way to go about it, right? Because he's basically saying every single endgame player, right? His opinion, which is, again, the opinion of one person who, you know, he's 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 not entirely wrong, but again, again execution, and I don't think he's entirely right either. He's basically saying every endgame player with this statement here is going to be doing a disservice if you skip fusions. That's like me telling the community, if you're skipping fusions, you're doing yourself a disservice, you're stupid. If you're an endgame player and you're skipping fusions, you're stupid. That's basically what this is saying, right? And um, I just don't like blanket statements. Like, I, I, would, I always speak personally, right? I always say, like, for me, for my account, for me, personally, this is how I do this, or this is what I think, but only for me, because everybody is different. Everybody's got different situations, and you can't assume to know how things are going to be for, for everybody. You can make assumptions, but you also have to give those asterisk marks, right? It's important that you recognize everybody and their individuality. That's important in gaming and in life. You're dealing with other people, right? This is a community. And his point here, Frederick Home 96 um, has a really good point that I was also going to bring up. Is it a... No, wait, no, not him. Frederick Goodman. Great point, right? Because I think it was Darren, right? I was, talk, or I was talking with Darren in the comments and he was saying what he does, right? Or he, what he does with his energy is lets it top off and then just stacks energy to make sure that he can win a tournament or win an event or really just smash out an event and get all the resources. And it was something along the lines of like when he first started out. To this day, I still do this because I, you know, I really like it, and I think it's good, and it saves me time. It makes sure it makes it ensures that I'm not on the phone. Um, I mean, I kind of always am because I I'm always responding to YouTube comments and everything. But uh, besides the point, basically, if you're a newer player, it might be worth it more for you to, to it might be worth it more for you to save and stack your energy and then dump it all in one event, like an ice golem tournament, and get first place, get all the rewards. And then get, you know, like the relentless, relentless gear rather than spending all your energy every single moment that you get it, which by the way, also is a good idea. You just have to pick and choose, right? But there's, these are different perspectives. And this is why it's really important to have these conversations, why I always do these kinds of videos so that everybody in the community can come together and have these academic conversations, right? So, um, you know, on the other hand, people like Boozer, for example, probably one of the best, if not the best free-to-play player, uh, has says has always said that he spends his energy all the time. But I do think he said something in one of his videos along the, uh, along the lines of he's at the dinner table with his family on his phone making sure that he's hitting Spider or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's cool. I'm not casting any judgment. But I'm saying for me, that's probably, you know, kind of like a line, a line drawing? Or I don't know how to explain it. But I mean, it, it kind of sheds light on the subject a little bit. If you can open your, open your mind to it. Like, to spend your energy every single waking moment. And again, I've done both of these things. I've let energy stack and I've also spent energy all the time before it even caps. And it's a pretty efficient way to do it. If you can do it and you want to do it go ahead and, and and do that because you can get a lot of silver, you can get more gear. It's actually the most efficient thing you can be doing with your account. But also the other side of it is you can just chill, stack energy, and then dump it all and win an event or like complete a fusion with all that, that energy instead of um, scraping for energy at the bottom of a barrel, trying to get energy wherever you have, you go into a fusion with, with everything that you have. And so, you know, that that's that's all this to say... There's different ideas and you can't cast an opinion and say it works for everybody, all right? Um, but yeah, he's got his point. You're wasting resources on trash, hoping you pull a dupe or useless garbage later. You set yourself back from any real progress while claiming you are endgame for some vault guardian. True. His response, 
if you're endgame, you can still save for guarantees and still do fusion. This is also true, right? Because I, for, I mean, you, I just did a big shard pull video, so I, I don't have a lot of shards, but like I was nearing 40, 50. My clan leader in one of my clans has like 50 plus right now. So technically he's still in, and in the video that I did where I was pulling a bunch of shards for Harima, I even said, you know, I want to stay within striking distance of a guaranteed, which is like 20. They might bump it up, inflate it to like 25. I don't know, but it's usually 20. It's been 20 so far. Guaranteeds are usually 20 for sacreds. I think for voids, it was like 150 maybe, or was that for blues? Somebody fact checked me, but he's right. If you're end game, you have a stable source of obtaining shards you can still save for guaranteed and still diffusions right progressive events are shit i've pulled every edit i pulled at every duchess and nut one and i'm still sitting without a dupe of nut or zero duchesses and zero duchesses pull for every, every guaranteed since that means there's another lego i can get true progressive events are for whales who can hit mercy a few times if you think 10 all the way 25 will be getting what you want Getting that OP champ. I have an NFT I can sell you. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, you're missing another point for skipping fusions. And this one is a big one for me, at least. I do not want to have to play the game all day, every day. That's true. I just want a month of casual minnow SD, Phantom Shogun farming, or piling energy without having to think about the fusion calendar or whatever. I did play efficiently for the first two years, but relaxing and skipping a fusion I don't need is great. So yes, you are right about skipping a fusion, and but... But most endgame players don't give a shit about it, whale or not. And it's true, right? And we're all saying the same thing here. I'm pretty sure you're watching this if you've made it this far. That you're probably saying the same thing as well. Like, I don't think anybody here is right or wrong. I think the original poster kind of presented the idea in not the best way. But I get where he's coming from. I don't think he's wrong. I would have said it differently. But, you know... You can still do shards, shard fusions for the shards for Maud. That's true. If the fusion champion sucks, don't summon it and just convert it to Maud. Yeah, that's another thing too. I only skip if I'm low on resources and pushing in a tournament for certain rewards I've liked. Like I've had to push to 66k for a ninja. God damn, five star soul. As a noob, I'm not getting this meme, I guess. These are all old fusions. If you have two of the same champ, faction guardian, okay. Um, can't be bothered doing every single mediocre vault guardian fusion on the off chance I'll pull a dupe for a faction guardian. No siree. That's true. Because, again, you're betting on the off chance, which is also quite likely the chance that you might. Uh, quite, uh, It's a good chance you're going to um, pull a faction guardian or like a, a fusion past fusion champion. And, um, you know, I even asked in my... I talked about it in my, my summon video, which, by the way, is like the most viewed video on my channel right now right here approaching 8k views so thank you for 8k views on one video so i was looking at some of your guys's comments replied to all of them i see them all i'm not the only one who thinks this reynard flores says i truly believe with every summoning event there's an increased chance to pull prior fusions lower quality least played legendaries compared to the rest because champions like newt fusion champion i'm not i haven't summoned a dupe of him yet on my main account i'd like to but i haven't Every event, I browse through channels before pulling shards and see Killian, Bambus, Nogdar, Gerda, Elagaius, Pixneal summons, past crap fusions, basically. Palerium's just catfishing at this point. point. Yeah, so, um, uh, Epic Empowerment, well, Secret, there was a, oh, basically, like, a lot of you guys are saying, we're saying a lot of the same things in here, that you are more than likely to pull past fusions but um yeah i mean i'm not gonna delve into oh here katie mckaylin was the one who said it about two-thirds of the current pool were in pool were introduced through fusion events so you should pull a previous fusion two-thirds of the time i thought the same thing about increased increased rates for previous fusions before looking into it further and that does make sense i need to check the veracity of this statement because i don't know for sure if it's 66 percent of the pool or 67% of the pool being past fusions. But it checks out, right? Increased rates on fusions fusion, fusion, fusions for sure, but I'm still waiting on my first night. That's true. 